stop letting that order counter count down. You got 45 seconds on single order requests and a pretty lengthy 90 seconds on stacked orders. Listen, look at the basics. If it doesn't make sense, if you don't like it for all of the reasons, decline it so you can get ideally another order request. And that's just one. I got six more mistakes you don't want to make as a DoorDash Dasher in 2023. And I feel like the last one not a lot of people know about. Number two, that I guarantee it's going to happen to you eventually as a DoorDash Dasher, listen to this, it's allowing the customer to change the delivery address without contacting support. So imagine this, Chipotle, Wendy's, Taco Bell, insert popular local restaurant here, you did the pickup already. And then you get a caller text saying, hey, um, actually, I know you're supposed to deliver to such and such address. Uh, that's a mistake. I'm actually way over here. Can you deliver it over here? Because on DoorDash's official support page, when asked, well, can I change the delivery address as a customer? It reads, if you're not able to select your desired delivery address, i.e. the address is grayed out, this means the address is not within range of the restaurant from which you ordered and we aren't able to make this change. We set delivery ranges to ensure a speedy delivery and that your food arrives fresh. There's a radius, folks. There's a radius around these restaurants for a delivery zone. There's a popular spot for Chinese here in Pittsburgh. I'm outside of the delivery zone, so I don't get Chinese food. Yes, you better believe there's been reports of customers doing this because they know some of them. I won't paint with too wide of a brush here. Comment down below what you think it is. But some customers 100% know that they're not in that zone. And there was an article here talking about a Reddit post. And this gives us some flavor of what DoorDash is saying. And a DoorDash spokesman says, quote, what's described in this post is not acceptable as far as the customer trying to change the address when they're not allowed to deliver to that zone. Continuing, quote, we expect all customers to provide accurate information when placing orders and any deliberate manipulation of orders is against to policy. So as a DoorDash Dasher, just remember if they're trying to change the address and it's not done automatically or you're not given a heads up actually via the Dasher official app, check with support to make sure it's okay and within that radius. Number three, kind of playing off that is to understand the basics that we always want you to hit $1.75 paid up per mile aiming for $25 an hour. So for that past example, just imagine if you're now driving an additional 10 miles away, 11 miles, that is not a smart business decision. And had you known that for, let's say like a 650 payout, you wouldn't have taken it. So again, knowing the basics, so don't forget that. Number four that I've been saying for years, it's assuming that max peak pay means max hourly pay for you as a dasher. Now, I saw recently here in Pittsburgh, $4 peak pay for our popular central zone because obviously your market's broken into different zones on DoorDash. Now, you have to know that $4, which I would say, yes, is close to the max peak pay that we get here in Pittsburgh. Is that worth it to drive in that zone? Here in Pittsburgh, I'd say, yeah, because it's constantly busy. We got a lot of food delivery orders and I'm guessing the supply and balance of drivers, it makes sense. But when I did DoorDash in San Diego, there was four, five, sometimes $6 peak pay. And you need to, again, understand statistically, is that gonna make you more per hour getting a six or $5 peak pay versus just taking the four or 350 peak pay? And I'll tell you what, you can have hunches, you can have anecdotes, you can talk to other drivers, but nothing really tells a story like actual analytics because data and trend analysis doesn't lie. We have an Excel sheet, we have a sheet for Mac numbers, and it tracks all of the relevant data for any, most any, side hustle app. So get a copy at yourdrivermike.com, click on resources like other drivers and gig workers like you every day that are picking up these spreadsheets so you can actually see if it's making sense. Number five, let me ask you this. How many incentive programs are there 
on DoorDash as a Dasher. Think about it. What, what do they got? They got Top Dasher. They have Accept More, Earn More, or Priority Access, whatever they want to call it. They got quite a few. They got more than that, but that's just a few examples, right? So if you're assuming that these are worth it, that you should go for it, that the qualifications are worth it, and it's all positive, that's a mistake. You got to understand the qualifications that I talked about. Usually acceptance rate with some of these. Is that worth it to go for priority access with a 50% or 70% acceptance rating threshold? So I'm just telling you, I don't want you to assume that if something is automatically offered, it's like that peak pay that we just talked about. Just because it's offered doesn't mean it's the best offering for you in your marketplace. So some of these might make sense. Some of these might be worth it to go for, but I would strategically use these under certain circumstances. And again, only if the numbers make sense. Number six, don't waste your cancellations. Use them strategically. So again, let's think together. Comment down below if I miss any of these. But why would you cancel an order request? Obviously, like the number one thing you think of is a long wait at the restaurant. Well, what about if you accept accidentally? What if you accept and then you didn't realize it's taking you into heavy traffic or the parkway, the highway, a certain road is closed off. You didn't realize it. And then they're diverting traffic and everyone's got to go through a back road. Forget it. I'm going to you know, get out of that. I'm going to turn around and go a different direction or similar to that, it takes me in a direction that I don't want to go and I didn't realize that. So you could cancel there as well. Obviously, if there's an emergency, right? Or you kind of thought, well, I'm going to try to squeeze in one more order, but you really need a bathroom break. It happens or some other kind of break. There's that. Or what if almost instantaneously, because you should be multi-apping, driving on different apps, at the same time, so you can select the best order for you, right? And before you can go offline with the other apps, because you've accepted on DoorDash, you get like an $18, I don't know, three mile request on Uber Eats. By the way, follow the best practices here to get the biggest orders on Uber Eats. Then you'd want to cancel on DoorDash. So just don't waste your cancellations. Number seven, here in 2023, it's kind of astounding that there is more options than ever as a driver of things to do. Let's list them out. So there is your normal, right? Your restaurant runs. There are shop and deliver and, you know, shop and order. I get, well, order and pay, I guess it's called. There are grocery runs. So I park, I go into the grocery store, I shop, I check out. I got to deal with substitutions. There's that. There's the option for cash on delivery where you're encouraged to have $20 in cash in change. And then the customer is going to pay and tip in cash when you make that delivery. I was kind of milling around at these support pages and I didn't even really realize this was a thing. Have you gotten this? Comment down below. Routed deliveries. So... I've been kind of seeing this on Uber Eats, but I was told it's a glitch. It's a real thing on DoorDash. So it is one pickup and up to, well, three to 10 stops. And then you're given a guaranteed pay amount. There's pharmacy for prescription pickups and drop-offs. There's alcohol and tobacco deliveries, those age-restricted deliveries. And then there's an order type that you might qualify for. You have to hit a certain amount of criteria. The market has to need it as far as dashers. And this order type, as long as you have the right equipment, can pay up to two to three times the normal restaurant runs. Those are the DoorDash Drive large orders. So I would say just don't make the mistake of not knowing what's out there and then knowing how to best utilize it. So do I want to do the grocery? What are the pros and cons of that? You should know that. Do I want to do Dash Marts? Okay, what are the pros and cons of that? It's easy because it's pulled for me. And then, you know, there's no restaurant wait per se. Well, what about those routed deliveries? And I'll just throw this in at the end for you. But I think a big mistake for a lot of these gig apps, just in general at large, is setting it and forgetting it, going online and doing like whatever they say. Because this stuff's not hard, folks. I've said this for a while, like for years. It's not hard to deliver pizza. It's not hard to pick up for Walmart Spark. It's not hard to do 
parcel for roadie, whatever it is. But that's kind of what makes it hard because it's tricky to really master the app because you can think of a bell curve of earners, right? There's low earners, there's the big pool of average earners, and then there's what I want you to be, that top 15% of earners. And you can only get there by knowing what you're doing. You can get lucky and get there for a couple of shifts, but it won't be sustainable success because you got to know the best practices. So drop a like on this video. At the very least, consider subscribing. We have a whole course called Mastering Delivery if you want to take that to understand best practices on the food delivery space. But I hope this list helped you out in general. Drop a like on this video if it did. Click or tap the screen here for my newest video as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.